located in two places like Tel Aviv. Great software. Seriously, that's all you got? Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? Do we want to back into that? You can use DNA. Boy, those robots look cool performing. So, thanks everyone. I'm a member of the Kitat Ivrit, the family of my family Gan. And that's about the end of my Hebrew for the rest of the talk. That's about as good as it gets. Um, I want to apologize in advance, which is always a great way to start a talk. When they said, when you guys say keynote here, I think that means something different than when we say keynote in the United States. Well, I thought I was going to be giving one of those talks in this morning, so I was like, oh, I'll try to give one of those really inspiring TED Talks, not something really technical with a bunch of demos. So, sorry, there is absolutely no demos in this talk at all. There's no language things. I'm not going to try to teach you four languages in four minutes. There's none of that happening here. This is just going to be about some of my observations about the tech community and some of my thoughts around it. Are we all good with that journey? If, so if you want to get, this is like the part when you get on the plane and they're saying, if you, this plane is bound for New York City. If you're not intending to go to New York City, you can get up and get off the plane now. I'm giving permission to people to walk out if they, this is what, not what they were expecting. Sorry? Food? Like in New York, I give you food on the way? Yeah, sure, I'll give you an eggplant parmesan. But I'm not going to be um, a glot. This is no glot meals on this one, sorry. So if that's a problem for you. Um, that's me. I work at Red Hat. I can talk to you all you want. I could have given you a great demo on OpenShift, which is Red Hat's Kubernetes distribution. Um, but we're, that's not. And there's the Steve Zero, because I'm leet like that. right? It's not an O, it's a zero. And that's all the places you can find me. Uh, this is this talk is Creatively Common license. It's a Google slide deck, so if you want to actually copy and mix it up, go ahead and do it. And oh, so I generally, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a very informal speaker. Um, so I really actually like the questions while we're talk while I'm talking, not waiting to the end because I like it. I like back and forth. And I figure among my people that I could get some back and forth, right? Like if I go to Spain or China, nobody talks unless, you know, you put them on the spot. But I figured here, we all love to talk. Is that right? Like we should argue. I've got my hand gestures ready. So, okay. Um, so actually, and I'm, you know, everybody else was talking about like, oh, I've done computer programming for this many years and I've written low level assembly code. That's not my prerequisites for this talk at all. I actually have my PhD in ecology and Hemelopistis riemerii is an Uri Kaduri, found in the Negev Desert, right down in Sede Boker. So I did all my PhD field research down in Sede Boker. So that is also my tie here, right? And so I actually know quite a bit about ecology, which is why I'd like to bring it into these talks. And you can always ask me later what's the connection. So the impetus for this talk is I see people using ecology analogies and technology a lot. And it seems that our ability to expand past some very simple uh, analogies is not very good. So I'm always, as the ecologist, I'm always sitting here banging my head. And the ones that we like are, what's this one? You guys all talk e ecologia in school, right? I just read recently that among the OECD, Israel has the most environmental studies students who graduate with environmental studies in co from college. So I'm expecting, what is this? Who knew? Um, what is that? What's that example of an ecology? What is the fox doing to the rabbit, the hare? He's eating him. It's predation, right? This is a favorite one in technology. We like to talk about pred predation. And what's this between, now not the dead zebra, but between the vultures and the hyena and the lion? Is what? Sharing. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's called competition, right? And so this is the one we always like, survival of the fittest, competition. We love to go with this analogy too, right? This is a favorite one in technology. And so for me, what if we don't see the world as either predator, prey, or competition? And I'm going to give two case studies about other analogies we could use that can actually help us in the technology world not to be so death-oriented or sharing 
or co actually, what would this be called? This is called coopetition, right? This is when technology partners come together to divide up the kill, right? Uh, so case one, uh, in reading outliers, and I tend to think of this in general, software people, how many of you are all hardware people here? Like actually for your job, do hardware stuff. I know a bunch probably hack on hardware, but how many people do hardware? None. Great. That's exactly who I intended to speak to, which I assume the rest of you do software. Is that right? Right. And so do you generally look down your noses at hardware people? Think about it. In, in your heart, it's okay to admit it, we're among you know, software developers here. In general, we think, oh, you just build the routers. I build the really cool stuff. I'm super spe I build the app. I build WhatsApp. I build Waze. I build the good stuff. You just make the things that I run on, right? And so this leads to thoughts like this. Software is eating the world, right? This is Mark Andreessen in the Wall Street Journal. And so an alternative way to think about this is from an ecology term called succession. Does anybody learn about this in school? Succession, right? So just like the forests of Israel, not at all. Um, usually you start with some rocks and some grass and then over time some bushes and shrubs come in and then becomes trees and then you get this big nice healthy forest, right? And that's happening over time. So this is not a predator prey, this is a different kind of experience. And the prime example when you learned about this was probably there's a volcano and it makes rock, right? And then the lonely sh little shrub or plant sprouts up in the, middle of the in the middle of the rock, its roots start to come down, it breaks up the rock, it starts to make soil around it, and you start to get some small trees, right? And then you give it a couple thousand years and this process keeps continuing and you get a rainforest. Right, so that's the idea of succession. Everyone remember that or re refreshed with that now? Right, it's the idea that you start off with some substrates and then there's this back and forth and you build these different communities. So in our example here though, soil and the rock is actually hardware. And software is the biological community on top of it. All right, so rather than thinking of ourselves as so special, we can think of it this way. Who recognizes this? It's a machine. <whistles> Gold star. Next, it is a machine. It's a very famous machine. Does the word Babbage mean anything to you? This is the original Babbage computer, the one that Ada Lovelace programmed. Right, so that is the first computer. There, is there any software with this? Okay, it's not a hard question. <laughs> exactly. No. There's no software. It is all hardware. Right? And so this is our volcanic rock. Right? There is no biology growing on top of this. This is all just rock at this point. This is somewhere back in the 1940s, 1950s. And there, this is the U.S. Weather Service trying to predict weather for the Air Force. Right? So weather has always been important and they spend a lot on computers for it. And that's your software back there. Those wires. Right, so still not much software happening on Still pretty raw organic rock, maybe some moss, some lichen growing on top of it. But then we get to these. And I see enough faces in here that are of my age group that recognize actually what that is. Right? And probably did your CS work or some other work sitting in some smelly room with big printers on the side and this next to it. Right? This is a VAX machine for those of you with the green screen terminals. Right? But this now we have RAM, we have disk space, we can do interesting things. Who recognizes, how many of you did statistics in either graduate school or something like that? How many, who recognizes that? Gold star, well, you're too young to recognize that though. But you might, what is that? No, it's actually SAS. How many of you have heard of SAS? Yeah, so that's the original way that SAS used to look. Right, but so now we can actually, yeah, the proc, my proc, proc, that's, that's a SAS statement. We can argue though, I like it. This makes me feel comfortable. As a, it's very hard being on the west coast of the United States as an Eastern Jew. I feel like everybody's passive aggressive with me there. I like coming here because people will argue. Um, so that's SAS. So we start to get software, right? And we start to get doing interesting things now. So this is kind of like the shrub. Not very exciting, but you can start to do interesting things. You can also do this, right? The old player, there's a bottle in front of you. There's a 
there's a bottle of water here, there is food here, and you type in what you do and it just goes branching, right? But that was the first games that we had. But we've now started to grow some plants on top of the rocks. Well, now, now that the plants are there, interesting things start to happen, right? So people are like, oh, well, wouldn't it be really interesting? It, now that we have that, let's see what we can do the other way around. So the point with succession is not that you have rocks and then trees come and plants come along and do all the stuff and that's all there is to it. If there's feedback between rocks and plants and soil and plants and the air and plants in terms of what happens in the soil, right? It's not just one driving the other. So for example, do you know what this is? And someone, I saw someone at the booth from Cisco. Are you in this audience? Are you at Cisco too? You're both from Cisco? Okay, you're going to lose big points if you don't actually answer what this is. It's, a, it's an, one of the original routers. Right? And now you also know where the name San Francisco comes from. Right? That's the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's based off of San Francisco where it started. But that's one of the original routers. So here's like, oh, we've got these computers, and we've got this software. Wouldn't it be great if we could get software to talk to each other? So they build routers, and then you get this. It's pretty complicated. You guys have seen that map of the internet? This is the original internet. Right? And you can see some of the original. There's only, Europe only gets two, I think. London and Oslo. Oh, Aberdeen. No, Aberdeen's in the United States. The rest is all the United States, I think. Yeah, it's all the United States. Right, but that's the original internet. So now you can start building software because you have routers. And because you have the internet, you think, oh, well, I need to build faster routers. Right, so it's this back and forth. It's not just one eating the other or making the rest. Oops, too fast. So who recognizes that? This one, now I'm starting to get in closer to our age groups here for the most of the rest of the audience. It's a Unix machine. I think that's an HP Unix machine. Right, so now we've gone from having these huge computers, we can actually have computers on our desktop. How about that? Now, this you don't know. Exactly. But this, these, this row here and this row here know exactly what that is. What is it? Come on, you guys. It's got a phone. Oops. It's got a phone. It says data. Data phone. It's a, a modem. What? Uh, probably not, because it's click, 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 yeah. But that's what, this is the, one of the original modems. Right, so oh, now people are thinking, oh, well, I can actually connect almost any computer to that network we've started to build. So you combine that with some Unix computers, and then you start getting people getting PCs in their house. How many people had this one? I had this one. Yeah, it was screaming. And you get this, bulletin board software. This is some of the original BBB software. Right, people would run, use Unix machines in their house, maybe, or a PC, and then people would log in with this. Then you get, oh, well, now we've got all this interesting networking, and we're starting to get more computing power in the house. How, look how much memory is on that machine. Freaking awesome. Three gigabyte, di a three megabyte disk, or 30 megabyte disk space, or is that a three megabyte disk space? One, two, three, 30 megabyte disk space. Frickin yes, but now you've got like this nice Windows application, and you've got the modems, and you've got this other stuff going back and forth, driving each other, and you get this. All right, call out the number for the original browser icon, the very first browser that ever came out, which number is the original for it? You're out of luck here. You're never going to get this one. What? It was not links. No. Wrong. Which one? 25? Wrong. That's the commercial version that came out of the original one. You did not obviously download like satellite images waiting like 30 minutes for them to come down and watching the globe spin. That's Mosaic. Yeah, Mosaic. That was the original out of UIUC, I think it was. Right? So, but, but, okay, all my bravado aside, and I just showed you how cool I am because I know this stupid logo. Um, the important thing here is that there's an evolution going back and forth. There's a community g growing together, right? It's not that all the software people could have done this on their own, right? A browser makes no sense without all the other hardware that came with it. And those people making that hardware probably wouldn't be making that kind of hardware if there wasn't cool things to do with the software. So then you also get, now I'm going to bring it even more modern, you get cheap disks, you get racks and racks of servers, 
You get really cool networking and storage stuff. And then we decide microservices all the things, right? Like there's how many, everything's a microservice talk now, right? And so this, I want you to read this for a second because I think this is kind of my key here. It's like microservices, right? Is that some sort of, I think software people tend to think that microservices is something great we came up with. Like we're awesome, we made microservices. But it's the combination of hardware and software succession have created a new community. And do you know what I mean by community? Like a different kind of forest. Like the way in the desert you have like acacia trees growing with certain things around them. You go up to the Golan and you might start getting some Lebanese cedars. Right? And there's a different kind of community. So what's happened is F software and hardware have evolved together to grow a new type of community that we have not seen before. Does this commu it's, it's neither right nor wrong, right? Like we don't actually say, oh, the coral reefs, those are right. But the desert, that's wrong. We never say that, do we? Or some people may, but you may think, you may think a value judgment around it, like, oh, I like coral reefs more than I like the desert. But you don't say one is right or wrong. Right? And so the point with this is microservice is neither right nor wrong. It, it is actually something that you have to think about whether it matches what you actually need to do or not. Do you want to go hiking in a wide open space? Coral reef's not going to do much for you on that. Do you want to go swimming in warm water? The desert's not going to do much for you for that. Right? It depends on what you actually need rather than saying there's something great around it. And it's neither linear nor simple, like just pairing, like, oh, do this, 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 and then we get to that. Because there could be something like this. Right? So this is my example of SDN. So the soil, which is not even in the picture, helped to grow the tree. The tree then provides an environment to grow on, which is where all these bromeliads grow on top of. Right? And so that's why I think of that as SDN. Right? Like you still need the networking switches, which is the soil, but then you have Linux machines that then run another network on top of them, right? And so these Linux machines act as soil to the network to switch on top. So this is a, di I like this way of thinking about communities and community evolution and what's called succession as a different way for us to think about how things evolve rather than one is better than the other. So to pull it all together, we find ourselves getting more and more options over time, right? The Babbage machine was like volcano, ro volcanic rock. And as time has gone on, we've created more and more environments for different kinds of communities. So to, to make it a more global level and to bring it back to you, because I said I was going to make your life better, right? This is global diversity on the globe, right? And so where's Israel? Right there. Is it bright red? Right, these are hot, these are hot spots of biodiversity. Tons of biodiversity, lots of stuff going on. This is like microservices with open stack and a whole bunch of any any of the, all the keywords thrown together that somebody at a show is going to get up and saying we're doing this thing with big data microservices open stack node reactive we're doing it all and you're all losers because you're not doing it but I'm really cool because I'm doing it that's these people living here right now this is Israel I'm assuming everybody here is from Israel is that a good assumption at least or at least lives here right now maybe not born here but lives here and how many of you have gone down to like Mitzpah Ramon Right? I find, how many of you find Mitzpah Ramon beautiful? Right? So that's light blue. Maybe, and probably if you were actually zoomed in on Mitzpah Ramon, it would probably be dark blue because there's actually not that much there. My point is, you don't have to be here to be in a good place. It's not everybody has to maximize biodiversity to have a fulfilling life working in technology. You can be in Mitzpah Ramon as long as that works for what you want to do with your life, don't feel bad about it. It is neither right nor wrong. Does everyone got that one? So this is the same thing in the United States. So the, the tie-in, everybody thinks they want to be in rainforests with orangutans and all the fun stuff, but we don't all have to be rainforests. The tundra is beautiful as well, and polar bears are really cool for the time being until they all die because of global warming. But before that, they're actually really cool. Okay, so that's the first case story. So we learned about, we don't have to do predator prey, right? We can think of succession instead. The second case story is Google and Facebook scale envy. And I think I'm actually, as a developer evangelist, I'm actually very guilty of this, 
where when we try to get you excited about our project, we can say, you too can be Google scale. You guys have heard that, right? Or this is what Facebook does, and you want to operate at the same scale as Facebook, don't you? And I think this is creating a really bad dynamic in our community. Uh, have any of you seen Hoop Dreams, the basketball movie? Yeah? OK. If you haven't, it's a great movie just to watch in general. It follows two high school, two high school kids in inner, inner city, I think it's Detroit. Maybe it's Indiana, and, no, or maybe Chicago, one of the two. Um, and it basically talks about how they're setting up their whole life to be in the NBA. And then it goes through and basically destroys how, how unlikely it is for any child to actually finally end up in the NBA. And so I think for us, being Google and Facebook scale is kind of our hoop dreams. I mean, for some of you, that's fine. But we can't all be Google and Facebook scale. It just doesn't work. So <clears throat> this is, in the United States at least, this is the average size. Th I'm going to give you some statistics about companies with 250 to 2,500 employees. How many of you work in a company about that size? Uh, everybody. So I'll say a third. The rest of you all work at bigger companies? How many work in companies that are bigger? Lama. You operate as an independent unit inside of Cisco. Yeah, I like making, this is like the Torah. Turn it over and over and over, and there can be many answers to that question about the size of your company. Okay, so just let's just go with it. Pretend you're a small company if you want. That's your average IT budget, $500,000. Forty-three percent of that is dedicated to maintaining and and keeping your desktop PCs. Let's just round it up to fifty. That means you have two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year to be Google scale, and you usually have at most one hundred and nineteen people on your entire IT staff. At least half of which are dedicated to email and maintaining people's desktops and their bring your own phones, right? I mean, is that the reality of most people's companies that said they were in that range? Thanks for that. I know I'm talking about tech companies, but even a tech company sometimes, I've worked at tech companies and their IT staffs are small. We have like an IT staff of four. And I, whenever I wanted a server before AWS, it was like, well, put up the purchase request. Oh, you guys are all cloud first. So this talk is all wasted on you guys. All right. So I just want to give you some statistics about Google. That, anyone want to guess what that number is? This is always fun because people love to make this one up. No. I don't even know how many of those they have. How many containers they run per week? Actually, that number is probably sl small, but it's seven per second, right? 7,000 per second they launch. Okay, that's actually how many lines there are in their source code base in 2015. What? Android, yeah, that's right. Android is 95% of that. What's that? <laughs> he said employees for anyone else who didn't get that joke this is the number of people with commit rights to that code base right so 25,000 people with commit rights I think the last time I looked it up they have something like I forget it's a couple thousand PhDs on their staff how many of you have a PhD working on your staff one and it doesn't count if you're at Cisco because you're that small little group. I'm sure Cisco has a bunch. But it, within your group, how many of you have a PhD working on your staff in CS? I don't count because mine's in ecology, so it doesn't get you anything. Nobody, right? And they are so specialized, they have an unpatented custom chip for their search algorithms. Why did they not patent it? Because to patent it means they would have to show it, and to show it means someone would steal it. And they don't want to sue somebody, they just don't want anybody finding out about it. What's that? Revenue? <laughs> no, you, that's gajillion. Um, the, that is the number of so sound and vocalization fragments they have in just English to do the voice recognition with the Android phone. Okay, so I mean, I think.
think it's nice and it's something to aspire to. But it's highly unrealistic for most people to think that they are going their company is going to be Google scale. There is a lot of fun and money in all the places below number one. Right? So who's the two big I was trying to think of this before. Who are the two big um, telecom providers that provide all like the answering machines that are based at, both based in Israel? Does anybody remember? What? No, not Bezek Shalom. Hamispa? No, um, it's, I forget who it is. There's two of them in this company, one of them second. But that company is still huge, right? Like LG is still a huge cell phone company, right? How many of you have an LG phone? Do you like your phone? Yeah, I like my phone too. They're like number six. Do you think all those LG employee companies are sad because they're not Samsung? Some are, but a lot are not. They go, they go to work, they make cool phones, they get to feed their kids, they get to do all sorts of fun things, they get to go to conferences. So they're not Samsung, so they're not Apple. It's just you have to set your expectations properly, right? Like, wait, well, who's the famous model for, well, there's plenty of them. Uh, I'll just talk about Natalie Portman. I keep thinking Natalie Portman should have dated me and married me and she married that French guy instead. I'm gonna live a life of disappointment if I'm gonna wait around for Natalie Portman to come to me. Not everybody can be a French choreographer who gets to touch her body all the time in that movie Black Swan, right? So there is absolutely zero chance I am going to be Natalie Portman's spouse, zero. So what good is it to set my expectations that I should be Natalie Portman's wife, I mean husband. I could, I'll be your wife too, I don't care. But. But I, what is the chance of that? So like when we sit here and we say, you should be Google scale. I need to be Facebook scale. I need to be using whatever Facebook's using because that's what they're using and I need to be like them. Like I could start dressing like that choreographer and that's not going to do anything to improve my chances. So in ecology, we have this idea called niche differentiation. All these, ch all these warblers, these are all American birds. You don't even have warblers here in, in Europe and Asia. But all these birds inhabit the exact same kind of tree, right? And the way they learn to coexist, niche differentiation is, the black-throated green warbler only lives in this part of the tree and this part of the trunk. The black Bernian warbler doesn't go so close to the trunk, just stays on the outside over here. Yellow rumped warblers, otherwise known as butter butts because of their yellow bottoms, ha inhabit here and mostly forage over there, right? So they all live in the tree, they all live a good life, but they all pick different pieces of the tree to occupy. I'm sure you could try to go up against Google in the search area. You can go for it. Just know that you're following a hoop dream, right? You're probably gonna end up not making it. You might get acquired though, so that might be good, but you're not gonna be Google that way. And so in ecology, we have niche differentiation. So it allows species, even very similar species, to occupy the same space without directly competing with each other. Right? So instead of thinking, let's just pretend that you've always wanted it, the Cape May Warbler is Google. Google. It's on the top of the tree. Everything's great for it. So rather than think you have to live there, you know what? Be a yellow rumped. There's actually way more yellow rumped warblers in the world than there are Cape May Warblers. These guys are actually probably endangered. I know for a fact these are everywhere. Right? And they live a pretty good life. So the question is not, how do I become Google? The question actually should be, how do I get to work with the fulfilling technology that makes my job better? Yeah. That, that's my question. Don't you go after Natalie Portman. I've got enough problems as it is. Did you everybody hear his question or his statement? He said he thought the question was, how do I get Natalie Portman? That's not your question. <laughs> okay. So the que I think this is a better question for us to be asking ourselves. Rather than all fighting over how we get to be the, the one eating the zebra first, right? We should stop and say, what? No, sharing, right. We're, how, about, how do we be the one who gets to decide who gets what's left over of the zebra? Yeah. Um, we should think about what we really want out of life. And is it, to be, is it that important to be Google scale or Facebook scale? Or is it more important to, I got to play with really cool tech today, I like the people I work with, I make a good living, and not in my case, but I still have most of my hair left at the end of the day. 
right? or I enjoy what I do. Is that Google scale really something to tie into that you really need to be? So the world is not only competition or predator prey, but also successional dynamics and niche differentiation. The take homes are, you don't have to think that you are not eating the world, nor do you need to be, you are not being eaten, you are not eating, nor do you need to be eating the world. And I also think you're not necessarily being eaten either. And you don't need to be Google scale. You are okay just the way you are, all right? And you need to be using appropriate and fulfilling technology for your actual work. Just because Google uses it, or Facebook uses it, or some new hot, hot startup person comes up on the stage and says, not that I'm picking on anyone in particular, but I'm going way deep in here, and if I do this string compilation this way, I get this much more performance out. If that's not what you're really excited about, don't spend your time thinking about that. Like, do the part that makes you excited. That's the end. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>